Greetings, one and all. I am the director of elections here at Decision Desk HQ, Brandon Finnegan. This week, my home state holds its delayed primary. That's right, it's Maryland's turn under the election spotlight. Now, after Governor Hogan's success in court over redistricting earlier this year, new boundaries pushed the elections back and yielded a more competitive map than earlier. Both parties' gubernatorial primaries are interesting, and one congressional district may potentially surprise us all in November, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Before we dive fully in, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to click that bell so you're notified as soon as we've released new of them and give them a like. Let's go ahead and get on into the elections. Maryland, by all accounts, is a blue state. I was born into it still being slightly competitive back in, oh, the year of 1985, but it's voted overwhelmingly Democratic in the last four presidential elections and hasn't voted for Republican since Bush in 1988, when I was three. That said, Republicans have surprised here with uh, incumbent Governor Larry Hogan pulling off an upset victory in the last Republican wave year of 2014 and winning easily his re-election just four years ago. He's term limited now, so Democrats are hoping to flip the mansion back and a number of strong candidates have lined up at the chance. First up in this list would be Tom Perez, former US Labor Secretary and Chair of the DNC. He spent just under a million dollars so far and he's received the endorsements of the AFL-CIO, Baltimore County Executive Johnny Alceski, and the Baltimore Sun and the Washington Post. Challenging him for the slots are incumbent comptroller Peter Franschel. He himself has spent about $1.2 million, and at least a fraction of that money has been spent on all those huge Franschel governor billboards that I see all over Baltimore. He's received the endorsements of a couple of state delegates, including Sandra Bartlett, Pamela Queen, and Stephen Johnson. Now, despite his differences of opinion on the gas tax, the red line, and a few other things, he's maintained a very friendly relationship with our current Republican governor. Rounding out the top three candidates in a rather crowded field, and certainly not the least of them, is Wes Moore, a combat veteran and entrepreneur who has spent $1.9 million so far in this race, eclipsing everybody else. He's received the endorsements of the Collective PAC, State Senate President Bill Ferguson, House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, Congressman Kwasi Mfume, Congressman Dutch Rupersberger, and so on and so forth. It's a really interesting field this year in the Democratic side. Now, the primary this time is kind of funny. In previous elections, we've seen it where there's one standout progressive candidate or standout issue X, issue Y, issue Z. But we've gotten kind of more typical Maryland-esque Democrats running this time be it with very mixed up coalitions that seem to all overlap with each other. And as a result of that, it's a little bit hard for Democratic voters to really be set in their in their opinion about who they're going to vote for. A recent Goucher poll kind of underscores that. Nearly two thirds of Democratic respondents indicated they could change their mind in the final weeks about who they were going to vote for. In the horse race portion of that survey, just 16% backed Franshaw, 14% back Wes Moore, and 14% back Tom Perez. 35% just a couple of weeks ago were still undecided. Let's switch over to the Republican side of things too. Now it's kind of interesting as well. Kelly Schultz, who's the former state secretary for labor under Governor Hogan, he kind of, you could say, is the front runner. He's got a considerable number of endorsements, including that of the governor, has raised over three quarters of a million dollars. But she's being challenged by Donald Trump-backed Frederick County Delegate Dan Cox, um, arguably more conservative candidate. So it's kind of a proxy fight, if you will, between Hogan and, and Trump, something we kind of saw happening in real time when Trump, back when Trump was president his first term, kind of going back and forth with the governor of Maryland. Now, because these races are so close, I do want to let everybody know it's important that you are aware that the bulk of the early vote in the state, all right, your, your large number of your mail-in ballots, they're not even going to be reported on election night due to current counting and canvassing rules. There was a thing back and forth between the governor and the legislature about dealing with that problem. Unfortunately, this is where we are right now. So you'll be waiting perhaps as much as a week for these closer contests to really see who comes out ahead during the canvassing period. And the decision desk will be updating those returns as we get those updates from the state of Maryland. I do want to round out this short video, though, with a look at the redrawn 6th district down in Western Maryland. Now, stretching from super conservative Garrett County, way, way, way out here in the West, kind of snaking on through Frostburg, Cumberland, Hagerstown, Frederick, 
You end up all the way down in much more liberal Montgomery County, but just a chunk of it. This district did vote for Joe Biden over Donald Trump by about 10 points, but it also voted easily for Larry Hogan back in 2018 and only narrowly voted for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump back in 2016. So it's much more competitive than it had been before the redraw, and it's attracted several candidates on the Republican side. Now, back again after having won the nomination in 2020 is Delegate Nero Parrott. And he's raised the most of the field, has received the endorsement of the Washington Post. You also have Matthew Foldy, a 25-year-old former reporter with the Washington Free Beacon. He's running a spirited campaign for the seat as well, and has the second most cash on hand. Mr. Foldy has won the endorsements of Governor Hogan and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Sensing the competitiveness that is coming here, Incumbent Democratic Congressman David Trone has loaned his own campaign about $10 million as of the latest FEC filing. It will be the most interesting of the state's eight congressional district elections. The rest are firmly in the Democratic column, save for the first congressional district. That's home, of course, to Republican Andy Harris on the Eastern Shore. Now, if you've enjoyed these previews, please be sure to like, subscribe, and sign up for new video notifications. I'm Brandon Finnegan, Director of Elections here at Decision Desk. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.